There are some very exciting new features in the beta version of After Effects, and in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. If you haven't installed the beta version before, just open up the Adobe Creative Cloud app, head to the beta section, and install it right here. The first and I think most exciting new feature is called Quick Offset, and it allows you to stagger layers very easily just by clicking and dragging them. So I made up this little example of these balls all dropping down and bouncing a few times. It's pretty boring though, because they're all happening at the same time. If I select these layers in the order I want them to be offset and then hold down Control Alt or Command Option on a Mac and then click and drag, it's as easy as that to stagger these layers by any amount of time. So I'm just gonna drag these out quite a bit play this again, and now I have the sequential progress of all of these balls bouncing in my composition. And it's dependent on what order you select the layers in. So if I just make a random selection of all these layers really quick, and then I hold Control Alt down and then click and drag, it's going to offset them in that order, which gives me a much more randomized motion. And I can exaggerate that as much or as little as I want with that keyboard shortcut to get a lot of variation very quickly. There are third party tools that do this very well that I use all the time, but the fact that I can instantly activate this with a keyboard shortcut is a huge time saver and something that I think is long overdue for After Effects. So I'm very glad to see it in beta and I hope to see it in the current release very soon. Now, this works on more than just layers. If I go to my next composition, you might have seen me tease this on Instagram, but I just have this pendulum animation of all these different balls hanging from the strings and they just go back and forth. Now, I've used an expression to loop the last two keyframes and I've offset the distance from each one of these balls from the top here, but otherwise they're exactly the same. So I'm just gonna press U to bring up all the keyframes at once. And the way that I created a very hypnotic animation is by grabbing just these keyframes right here, the last set, and then hold Control, Alt, and then hover over the keyframe. And now I can click and drag to stagger just those keyframes. So let's say that I just offset it ever so slightly, not even an entire frame between each one of these keyframes. And that subtle bit of offset creates a very mesmerizing animation of this pendulum swinging, the oscillation that eventually gets out of sequence the further down the line you go. And it was as easy as clicking and dragging while holding down the keyboard shortcuts. So again, this is something that I'm very excited about to have in After Effects natively, being able to quickly offset keyframes and layers is a huge time saver. And this kind of animation would have taken multiple steps in the past where I stagger the keyframes and then condense it down in the graph editor so that I can have values between keyframes. It's just so much quicker now that I can just use a keyboard shortcut to offset those keyframes. Now I do have one more example for this quick offset feature of these lines that are rotating. And if I bring up the keyframes, we have something very similar. It's just repeating this with an expression. But if I grab all of the keyframes and not just the last one and I hold Control, Alt, and then click and drag, you can see that it's staggering them as a whole. Each group of keyframes is being offset Set. And again, I've been able to create something that would take me much more time currently in After Effects than just holding down a keyboard shortcut and dragging the keyframes out. And the keyframes work in the exact same way as layers. It's the order you select them in. So it takes a little bit more time, but if I randomize the selection of keyframes here, I'll be able to offset everything randomly instead of sequentially. It is sequential, it's just based on the order that you select the keyframes in. And now we're gonna have something that looks a little bit more random. So. That's it for the quick offset feature. If you use this and you have any feedback for the Adobe team, there's a link down in the description to the Adobe community specifically for this feature. Now, if you're pretty new to After Effects and you wanna learn how to make these kinds of animations, check out Launch Into After Effects. It's my masterclass for introducing you to After Effects and all of the features that it has to offer. Through the more than 20 hours of video lessons, you'll create 10 exciting motion design projects from start to finish and have a great understanding of how After Effects works so that you can start making your own motion design projects. There's a link down in the description if you're interested in that. Now, let's take a look at the next new beta feature. I'm gonna go back to this lines comp and historically, the only way to duplicate a layer is by selecting it and pressing Control or Command D or copying and pasting it. But now we can just simply Alt or Option, click and drag in the composition to duplicate a layer. It's as simple as that. It works like other Adobe software like Photoshop, Illustrator. It does not work down in the timeline. So Alt or Option dragging isn't gonna work down here. But if you just need to quickly make a bunch of copies, so let's say I just wanted a few different rows of all of these layers, I can select all of them at once and then Alt, click and drag and that will make a bunch of copies all at once. And if I combine that with the quick offset, we get all kinds of randomness here. 
Now this can actually interfere with 3D compositions. If I make a 3D layer, let's just turn one of these on to 3D and I add a camera with Control Alt Shift C and click OK. If I were to hold down the Alter Option button, now it's going to switch to one of the camera navigation tools. Now, when I did this for the first time, After Effects actually prompted me to decide, will the Alt key duplicate layers by default or navigate cameras by default? And we can change this preference if we go to Edit, Preferences 3D down at the bottom of the list. And when this window opens up, we can find the setting right here. Alt drag behavior in 3D compositions can either activate camera navigation or duplicate layers. So you can always adjust this if you'd like, but I just wanted to point that out. Since this scene wasn't 3D to begin with, that's not an issue for me, but that's how that new feature works. And this next feature is something that I actually covered in my last beta features update, but I think it applied to this specific example. If I press shift tab anywhere in After Effects, it's going to pop up this quick anchor point set tool where I can choose any corner of this little dialogue and it will move the anchor point of all of my selected layers to the bounding box corresponding to that section. So I said the left center, and now all of these objects are going to rotate around the left edge. And if I shift tab again, I can switch this to say the right side, and now it's going to rotate from that point. We can also access this menu from the properties panel right here. Under the anchor point property, just click on it, and it'll open it up, and you can adjust that anchor point. So that's a little bonus feature for you. Next up is smooth zoom. So if I switch to my zoom tool and then click and drag, you're going to see that this smooth zoom is happening. It's a scrubby zoom. Again, like other Adobe software, After Effects is catching up. I have heard firsthand that this took a lot more work to implement than you could possibly imagine. So thanks to the Adobe team for doing this. I've also seen some complaints about people not liking that this zoom percentage doesn't land on whole numbers that bothers them. It doesn't bother me at all, but you can always press Alter Option and the question mark to fit to the size of the comp. I believe that's fit up to 100%. Or you could do Shift question mark if you want it to just always fit. You could also just press the question mark key to zoom to 100%. Honestly, I don't get why some of these things bug people so much. I just like having the ability to zoom at lower increments than just 25%. I think that's a really great change. Another interesting update that I actually have some feedback on is over in the effects and presets menu. So if we go to any of these categories, you're gonna see this new little information icon next to most of the effects. And if you click on that icon, it's gonna open up your browser and go directly to the Adobe user guide for that category of effects. So you can learn more about how that effect works. Now, if only there was a tutorial video for every single effect in After Effects that Adobe could take advantage of and directly link to with each one of these buttons and even play it right inside of After Effects. I don't know, makes sense to me. If you think that's a good idea, why don't you go tell Adobe to get the effects of After Effects series directly viewable inside of After Effects. The next two features have to do with 3D and After Effects. So in 3D composition, there is a default camera that is enabled. So if I switch to my camera tools by pressing C on the keyboard, I can orbit around this even though there's not actually a camera in my scene. It's the default scene camera, which we can even see the label of up here in the top left corner of the comp panel. In the past, you couldn't change anything about this default camera, but now you can. If we go up to layer, camera, default camera settings, you can modify this default camera just like any other camera. So I could change the focal length to 20 millimeters and click OK, and then I can navigate around and my default camera is going to respect that focal length. It's kind of a little thing, but it is something that I've wondered in the past, why can't I customize this default camera? So I think that's a welcome addition. Finally, we have an update to the Advanced 3D Render Engine, which I'm a big fan of. I've made some tutorials recently about it. You can go check that out if you're interested, but both Spot and Parallel Lights now support shadows in Advanced 3D. So let's take a look at how that works by going up to Layer, New, Light, and I'm gonna choose a Spotlight as the type. Make sure that Cast Shadows is checked on and click OK. And immediately we're going to see that shadow because I've set up a floor layer that's acting as a shadow catcher that's already set up. I'm just gonna rotate 
rotate my camera around a little bit and we'll see just how well these shadows work. So there we go, I've set my light up. If we go to the properties panel though, we can change how this shadow actually appears. The shadow darkness is set to 100% by default. That's not very realistic. In the real world, you're probably not gonna see shadows more than about 40%. I would go even a little bit lower, but we also have the ability to diffuse spotlight shadows in the advanced 3D render engine. So if I increase this, you see that we have a very nice soft edge as we get further away from the source object that's casting the shadow. And it also works on the objects themselves. So if I play this back, you can see it renders extremely quickly. Yes, I am viewing this at half resolution, but it's still really great performance. I'm gonna turn on an ambient light just to boost the shadows of my models on that unlit side a little bit. And I just wanna zoom in here nice and close to show you that yes, the shadows are grainy by default, but we can really clean this up if we just increase our render settings, which is something I would wait to do until I'm actually ready to export. So let me just move this up and out of the way and I can increase the render quality a bit, wait for After Effects to update, and even that is perfectly acceptable. But you can play around with the balance between render quality and render time as much as you want, especially when you're working in After Effects. You can always turn on Draft 3D to work really quickly as you're animating things and setting up scenes and then just disable Draft 3D when you're ready to get a look at the final quality. These shadows work with parallel lights as well, so let's add a new light, and I'll change the type to Parallel and click OK. Parallel lights are not gonna have that softness control. We still have the darkness, so I could turn this down, but a parallel light is essentially the sun. It's a light source that's an infinite amount of distance away. It's just going to be completely parallel light rays being shot from whatever direction it's oriented at. The position actually doesn't even matter on this light, it's just the direction it's pointed. So the point of interest and the position could actually be the same number, and then you just change that position ever so slightly to change the angle of the lighting. But those shadows are working extremely well in the advanced 3D render engine. I think the 3D team on the After Effects crew are doing really great work with the advanced 3D render engine. There are obviously features that are on my wish list that I'd like to see come through, but all of these incremental updates that we're getting are welcomed and I'm really excited to see them. That's it for this batch of updates. Those are my favorite features of the After Effects beta. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite and what you'd like to see coming to After Effects soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, 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 hey,